This lion was cared for by this woman for many years. He grew up under her care and they became the best of friends. But when the woman suddenly had to move, they were not able to see each other for years. But after eight years, she suddenly came back. What the lion did then was bizarre. Pay close attention to his reaction. Lion sees caretaker again after eight years. Pay close attention to his reaction. The past eight years had been heartbreaking to see. Every day the lion searched for Linda, his caretaker. Marvin would often sit in a corner, waiting for his caretaker, but was not able to see her for years. It was hard to see the animal suffer like this. Emotional distress is not something you can easily take away, the sanctuary owner said. Eight years passed, in which both had to miss each other. But then Linda unexpectedly returned, and when she came back in the cage, everyone wondered whether Marvin the lion would still recognize her. One false move, or the fact that Marvin would not recognize Linda anymore, could mean that she would become his dinner. But what Marvin then did shocked everyone. The story of how Linda met her lion friend Marvin was incredible, and that is why his reaction after her eight-year absence is even more gut-punching. Linda had been a wandering tour guide before all of this. She had been doing these safaris for many years, but no safari would be like this one. The group got into their car and first drove past some giraffes. The guests were very impressed, but the best part was yet to come. Because Linda knew that a little further was the territory of the lions. And before she could even announce it, the first lionesses appeared. They were truly beautiful and some of them even had a little cubs. But unfortunately there was disaster in the air. The lionesses were not alone. She heard warning roars from the lionesses. Linda yelled to the driver to go as fast as possible. Her guests looked confused, but Linda knew exactly what was going on. She drove at a fast pace towards the place where the sound had come from. Poachers, she said to her fellow travelers, who had no idea where they were going. When they arrived at the scene of the accident, the perpetrators had unfortunately escaped. But when an area is contaminated by the arrival of poachers, a pack of lions will never return that place. They simply know that it is not safe anymore and will find another place to live and roam. And in this case, that was a huge problem. Linda got out and walked slowly to the spot. She was about to crouch in the dirt to inspect the tire tracks of the poacher's car when she heard something. She looked around and tried to find the source of the soft moaning. And it didn't take long for her to spot where it came from. Because suddenly she saw something moving nearby in the bushes. There, all alone, sat a small cub. His mother had run away and he was left all alone. Linda knew that she wouldn't come back. Without a mother to guide him trough the first stages of his life, the cub will certainly not survive alone. And at that moment Linda knew what to do. She felt an immediate love for the cub and took him in her arms. She would take him back to the Australia, to a wildlife sanctuary. She also quit her job as a tour guide almost immediately after the discovery of the lion cub. There was something about him that made her never want to part ways with him again. That's why she traveled with him to Australia and started working to the sanctuary where the little lion cub was going. The sanctuary was a beautiful and serene place. The lions and other animals that lived there were well cared for, and Linda knew that this was the perfect place for Marvin to grow up. She had named him Marvin after her grandfather. And from the moment they arrived at the sanctuary, Marvin had captured the hearts of everyone who saw him. He was a playful and curious cub and Linda became Marvin's primary caretaker, spending most of her days with him, teaching him everything he needed to know about being a lion in the wild. She watched him grow from a small, helpless cub to a strong and powerful young lion before her very own eyes. Linda loved Marvin as if he were her own child. As the years went by, Marvin grew bigger and stronger and he was eventually moved to a larger enclosure where he could roam freely with other lions. Linda still visited him every day, but her time with him was limited. She had taken on more responsibilities at the sanctuary and had to spend her days caring for other animals as well. Despite the time constraints, Linda still made sure to spend as much time with Marvin as possible. They would often play together, with Marvin chasing Linda around the enclosure and pouncing on her playfully. 
Linda loved every minute of it, knowing that she was helping to shape Marvin into the magnificent lion that he was becoming. But one day, everything changed. Because Linda was not just taking care of Marvin. Her mother had been sick for a long time and Linda was also her main caretaker. She did basically everything for the poor woman. She could manage it at first, but when her condition worsened something needed to change. Her mother was relocated to a facility on the other side of the continent. Now Linda had to choose. With pain in her heart, she said goodbye to the sanctuary, and even more heart-wrenching, she said goodbye to Marvin. Tears poured down her cheeks, but she knew that this was for the best. She raised him to be a well-behaved lion, and she hoped that Marvin would find a new friend in one of the other caretakers. But little did she know. Marvin was devastated. He didn't understand why Linda was leaving. He would sit in the corner of his enclosure, waiting for her to come back, but she just didn't. The other caretakers tried to take care of him, but he was not interested in anyone else. He would roar loudly at anyone who came close and refused to eat or play. The staff at the sanctuary were worried about Marvin's mental and physical health. They knew how important Linda was to him, and they were determined to find a way to help him cope with her absence. They tried to bring in other lionesses for him to play with, but he wasn't interested. They even tried bringing in other caretakers, but Marvin just ignored them. Months went by, and Marvin's condition only worsened. He was losing weight, and his fur was becoming dull. They took on new caretakers in the hope that they could bring back some happiness back into this sad lion. They knew that Marvin could not go back to the wild anymore because he was taken away when we was too small to learn anything about surviving there. And with Linda not coming back any time soon, they had to try something. The new caretakers arrived and tried their best to help Marvin get back to his old self. But Marvin didn't like these caretakers one bit. One by one they came and one by one they tried to get this grown lion socialized again. But none of them could succeed in this fact. As the years passed, they eventually decided to just leave Marvin alone. The giant lion was hardly ever seen in public. He spent most of his time alone in his secluded cave, and when he was seen by the sanctuary staff, he always looked sad. Marvin just wandered around, probably looking for any sign of Linda. It was hard to see, one of the caretakers said. And when all this was happening, Linda was taking care of her mother on the other side of the continent. She knew about the situation with Marvin and the other caretakers, but simply couldn't leave her mother. But after a span of eight years, that all changed again. Her mother had a solid eight years at her new home in Melbourne. But her extended time had run out. The body of Linda's mom was spent, and it was time for her to leave this earth. Linda was happy that she could spend every good moment with her mother. Go now and be at peace, she spoke to her mother lovingly. Her mother smiled as she passed away with a satisfied look on her face. It was a sad moment, but it also meant something else. The ending of this chapter in her life meant that she had no more reason to stay in Melbourne. So quickly she moved back to the town she used to live in. It was an exiting time, because this meant that she was living close to Marvin again. But she also knew that reconnecting with her lion's son was not going to be an easy task. As mentioned before, Linda kept in touch with the sanctuary and she knew that Marvin rejected every caretaker that came after her. She also heard that Marvin grew isolated, jumpy and sometimes even a little bit aggressive towards human interaction. Linda had been away for well over eight years and she wasn't sure if her connection with him as a cub would last for that long. Linda knew that reconnecting with Marvin was going to be a difficult, but she was determined to try. She called the sanctuary and spoke with the staff, who were delighted to hear from her. They talked about Marvin's condition and warned her that it might be dangerous. But Linda was determined to see her old friend again. But she never expected the reunion to go like this. She arranged to visit the sanctuary the following week, and she spent the next few days preparing herself mentally for the reunion. When Linda arrived at the sanctuary, the staff greeted her warmly and showed her around the facility. She was surprised at how much it had grown and how many new animals there were. But she was there for one reason only, to see Marvin. Linda could see him from afar, sitting on a rock and staring out into the distance. 
He looked majestic and powerful, but also very lonely. He has been sitting like this for days, the park manager said. No one could come even close to him without him growling aggressively, he said. He was afraid that Linda was going to suffer the same fate and maybe even worse. Linda took a deep breath and approached the enclosure. Marvin didn't seem to notice her at first, but as she got closer, he turned his head and looked directly at her. His eyes narrowed, and Linda wasn't sure if he recognized her. She stopped a few feet away from the enclosure and spoke softly to him. Hey, Marvin, she said. It's me, Linda. Do you remember me? It was now or never. The staff opened the door, and even Linda had to admit that she was quite nervous at that moment. She did not see her old friend for so long, and in the end, it's still a wild animal. She walked into the enclosure, and that's when it happened. For a moment, there was no response. But that would all change very soon. Linda felt a knot in her stomach, thinking that she might have lost Marvin forever. But then, slowly, Marvin approached her. Was he going to recognize her? Or was he going to be aggressive, just like the staff members predicted? Everybody attending was holding their breath and the caretaker who led Linda in was standing by with his key still in the door for when things went south. Linda entered his residence and tried to make contact directly. He seemed nervous, which is usually not a good sign with wild animals. He pacified up and down a row of trees, staring at her intensively. Suddenly, he stopped and turned his body towards Linda. What was he up to? Would he still recognize her, or was he planning to attack? Linda had always been confident when it came to Marvin. But at this very moment, she wasn't so sure. Marvin took steps faster and faster towards his ex-caretaker, and then he jumped with outstretched claws towards Linda. He threw her on the floor and started licking his best friend's face enthusiastically. It was clear that Marvin still recognized her and that he was overjoyed to hug Linda again. The two rolled around and the surrounding caretakers stood with tears in their eyes watching the spectacle. Linda's reaction was just as special. She wrapped her arms around Marvin's waist and licked him back just as hard. It was as if Linda had now officially become Marvin's mother. Including the licks. She didn't care about those few lion hairs on her tongue. The moment was overwhelming for Linda. She started to cry, tears streaming down her face as she looked at Marvin. I missed you so much, she said, her voice choked with emotion. I'm sorry it took me so long to come back to you. Marvin just stared at her, his expression inscrutable. But Linda could see the affection in his eyes, and she knew that they had reconnected. For the rest of the day, Linda spent time with Marvin, playing with him and even grooming him. She felt a sense of joy and contentment being with him, and she knew that she would always be there for him from now on. I always said that he was like a son to me. And apparently I was like a mom to him, she said smiling. Over the next few weeks, Linda made frequent visits to the sanctuary. She would spend hours with Marvin, telling him stories, brushing his fur, and even taking walks with him around the enclosure. It was like looking at a well-trained dog at a dog show. But in this case, it was a 500-pound lion that rolled on his back, the park manager said. Slowly but surely, Marvin's condition improved. He became less aggressive towards the other caretakers, and he even started to play with some of the other lions in the enclosure. But it was clear that his bond with Linda was special. That's why she of course accepted her old job back as caretaker. So she would have to spend a moment apart from her best friend. As time went on, Linda and Marvin became closer than ever before. They had been separated for eight long years, but their bond had endured. And Linda knew that they would always be together, no matter what. In the end, Linda never regretted the years she spent away from Marvin. She knew that she had to take care of her mother, and that was the most important thing. But now Marvin was back in her life, she knew that everything had fallen into place. There are days that I spend more hours in Marvin's cage than I do at my own home, Linda says laughing. And at the end of the working day, Linda hugs Marvin on last time before leaving for home. See you tomorrow, my friend. You will never be alone again.